If you're interested in building a Voron, but you don't have the time or the desire, you may be interested in the Trudon 2.0. I just bought a second Trudon, but why? And should you buy one? Here's five things you should know about this Voron inspired printer. This is a fully enclosed Core XY 3D printer with a direct drive extruder and an all metal hot end. It has a build volume of 350 by 350 by 350, large enough for a full size helmet with some room to spare. This printer is currently on pre-sale for 899 US dollars from the Chinese warehouse or 999 from the US warehouse. In the case of the former, expect to pay another 200 US dollars in shipping plus applicable fees and taxes upon import to your destination country. If you order from the US warehouse, shipping is included in the price. It's uncertain how long this pre-sale price will be available, but it's been at this price point for over a month now. So honestly, this might just be a marketing strategy. This printer was heavily inspired by the design of the Voron 2.4, but it's not an identical copy. Here are some of the key differences between this machine and a Voron. The Trudon comes mostly pre-assembled, whereas a Voron needs to be built from scratch. The manufacturer quotes a 30 minute assembly time, but yeah, good luck with that. In my first attempt, it took me three hours. I've heard from others that their assembly ranged anywhere from two and a half to five hours. I'm pretty sure on my second attempt, I would be able to get it under three hours, no problem. The Trudon has no printed parts. Every plastic component on this machine is injection molded. These parts are of high quality, but that comes at the expense of personalization. When building a Voron, many people like to get creative with their color scheme. These parts are red from factory. If you felt so inclined, you could remove the stock plastic parts and paint them, or use the available STL files to print your own versions in a different color. The Trudon comes stock with the Afterburner tool head, which is one generation behind the state of the art for the Voron 2.4, which is the Stealth Burner. Some early adopters of this machine have already upgraded to the Stealth Burner, so it's definitely possible if that's something you're interested in. In fact, there are rumors of Vividino releasing a Stealth Burner upgrade kit as a retrofit solution for the Trudon. The Stealth Burner is generally preferred to the Afterburner due to its improved cooling, allowing for higher speed printing of PLA. The Stealth Burner is also equipped with integrated LEDs, which adds a nice aesthetic, but due to a lack of outputs on the Trudon's extruder breakout board, these won't be as easy to add. Speaking of upgrades, one of the hottest upgrades for a Voron right now is TAP. TAP is a bed probing mechanism that has numerous advantages over the stock inductive probe. Inductive probes become less accurate at higher temperatures and are prone to breaking when the wiring is routed through a cable chain. TAP overcomes these shortcomings by using the nozzle for probing. With TAP, a short section of linear rail is incorporated into the printhead, allowing it to deflect upwards when the nozzle contacts the bed. This in turn triggers an optical sensor which measures the height of the nozzle relative to the bed with an astounding degree of accuracy. So what does all this have to do with the Trudon? Well, the TAP carriage was designed exclusively for use on an MGN-12 rail, making it incompatible with the dual MGN-9 rails present on older Voron 2.4 models. Fortunately, the Trudon comes stock with an MGN-12 rail, making TAP a feasible upgrade. While we're on the topic of bed probing, let's talk about Clicky. This is another popular option for replacing the inductive probe. Clicky uses a stowable limit switch to probe the bed, giving more accurate measurements with no thermal drift. This is also a feasible upgrade for the Trudon, with one small caveat. The Trudon uses solid aluminum extrusions as opposed to T-slot extrusion for the gantry, requiring that you drill your own holes in order to mount the Clicky dock. Hey. Sorry to interrupt, but I was just filming some B-roll for this segment and I made a discovery that invalidates what I just told you. There's actually pre-tapped holes on the rear extrusion for presumably the clicky probe. Kudos to Formbot for adding that in. That is a very nice touch. All right, that's enough about bed probes. Let's talk about a pretty major difference between this machine and a built-to-spec forum. And that's the firmware. I've covered this pretty extensively in previous videos, but the Trudon comes stock with RepRap firmware, not Clipper. If you'd like to switch the machine to Clipper, the process is pretty straightforward, especially if you follow my instructions and use my configuration files. 
The stock RepRap firmware is quite capable. It includes all of the required functionality to operate this machine and get good quality prints. The brain of the printer is a custom motherboard designed by Big Tree Tech on behalf of Formbot. The motherboard is connected to a pair of daughter boards via a series of bus cables. One daughter board is on the base of the printer and is where the LED light bar, filament runout sensor, exhaust fan, and Z end stop pin connect. The other daughter board is downstream of the first and is mounted to the printhead. Rather than having individual wires routed between the boards, the connections are made via a pair of bus cables. The bus cables make the wiring cleaner, but hinder upgradability since the custom connectors are not plug and play with other boards. The bus cable that runs to the extruder snakes its way through the cable chain encased in a textile sleeve. This seems like a more robust wiring scheme than the individual wires that are typically left exposed when wiring a voron. However, if one of the wires were to break within the bus cable, the entire cable would need to be replaced. In theory, you could consider removing the bus cable from the cable chain and running it like an umbilical cord. As far as I can tell, this would be functionally equivalent to the CAN bus system that most new Vorons are being built with. The firmware this printer ships with has some issues, at least at the time of writing. The origin is at the back right of the machine, as opposed to the front left, causing your prints to be oriented differently than depicted in the slicer. The GAN leveling procedure only does a single iteration, as opposed to the usual four for a Voron running clipper resulting in a less level gantry than could otherwise be achieved. And finally, the stock motor currents are set at the limit for the stepper drivers, which puts the motors at risk of overheating. For context, the subset of RepRap firmware that runs on the TrueDown 2.0 is a port of the original Duet 3D version, which adds compatibility for more controller boards, including the one inside the TrueDown. The maintainer of this firmware subset is a group called Team Gloomy. For the Trudon, Formbot forked Team Gloomy's version of the firmware and hard-coded the pin assignments for their custom motherboard. Since then, Team Gloomy has added native support for this printer and provided a full set of configuration files that solve all of the issues I previously mentioned. So if you own this machine or plan to, I highly advise you to follow the instructions on the Team Gloomy wiki to upgrade the firmware to the latest version and replace all of the stock configuration files with their improved versions. The Trudon has an onboard Wi-Fi module that allows you to remotely connect and control the printer via the Duet web control interface. Unfortunately, this chip isn't spec'd for video streaming, so you wouldn't be able to connect a webcam for remote monitoring. The printer profiles this machine ships with are dreadful. They're built in Cura and haven't even been updated to change the retraction length from the Cura stock value of 6.5 millimeters for Bowden extruders despite the fact that this is a direct drive printer. Fortunately, with this machine being so similar to the Foron 2.4, we can use those profiles as a starting point. If your Trudon is running RepRap, the only things you'll need to change are the firmware flavor and the start and end G-code. If you've made the switch to Clipper, you can literally just use the Foron profiles as is. However, for my personal taste, I also switched the bed texture image to reflect the fact that this is a Trudon not a Voron. By the way, I have a pack of Trudon specific bed textures available for download through my Patreon. So if you'd like to support the production of these videos and gain access to some bonus downloadable content, you'll definitely want to check that out. Okay, that's it. For now at least. My plan for a future video is to do a head-to-head -head comparison of my Voron 2.4 with a stock Trudon running RepRap and a modified Trudon running Clipper. So you'll definitely want to subscribe with notifications on so you don't miss that video. I also have plans to do a full review, which I have yet to do, and it will be more exhaustive in my testing than I have been previously. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Taylor, this is YGK3D. Until next time, happy printing.